Hello. Thank you for volunteering your time to run the scoreboard at the Hopkins Pavilion. This video consists of two parts. The first part will cover the basics about the scoreboard and how to make specific entries on the controller. In the second part, I will talk you through a fake game and show you how that is done from the perspective of running the controller. When you arrive at the rink, you may find the controller set up as pictured here, powered off with a wired, handheld remote controller that is used for starting and stopping the main clock, and a piece of paper that contains directions for operating the scoreboard. The power switch is located on the right side of the controller. I have frozen the video here to show you that the model number is located under the display, just above the text I have inserted. The model number can also be found on the cheat sheet. Enter the model number of 0083261. The controller will then ask you two questions. Answer no, then yes. When you power up the controller, you may see this message. What the controller is telling you is that the switch on the handheld remote is set to on. Simply switch it off and the normal setup message will appear. At this point the scoreboard will look like this. The first order of business is to set the time on the clock to five minutes for the pregame warm-up. To set the clock you press the set button, then time, then the number five, followed by the colon, zero, zero, and yes. The scoreboard should now look like this with five minutes posted on the main clock. Whenever you change the clock time the controller will give you the opportunity to change the period number. Press 1 for the first period. Note the number 1 displayed in the period box on the scoreboard. Also note that under the home and guests column where you enter a score there is nothing. At this point you would want to enter a zero for the home score and the guest score. To do this you will go set home score zero yes and then set guest score zero followed by yes. Now, once again, to set the home score and the guest score to zero, first off you're going to use the set button. So set, then home score, and the value that you want, which is zero, and then yes to enter it into the system. And then we'll do the same thing for the guest score. So set, guest score, zero and then enter it into the system by pressing yes. There are a few times when the horn will sound. First of all, when the main clock reaches zero, the horn will sound. Also, you can push a button titled horn to manually sound the horn. As long as you're holding the button down, the horn will continue to blow. If you need to get the attention of the referees, simply give the horn button a quick push. Consider the horn button your best friend during a game. 
I, I mean it, do not hesitate to give the horn a quick tap if you are having trouble with the scoreboard and the refs are ready to drop the puck and start play if you do not have the scoreboard ready. Trust me, they want you to do this. Usually the refs are very good about looking at the scoreboard before dropping the puck, but sometimes they forget. The horn will automatically sound when the main clock reaches zero. The horn will unfortunately continue to sound until you turn the remote control button to off. Posting a penalty has caused problems in the past, but removing a penalty seems to be the biggest cause of problems for volunteers running the clock. Since these seem to be such a big problem, I will run through the commands once and then do it a second time in slow motion. To give a minor penalty to the home team, what we're going to do is push the set button and then the home penalty, 1 minute and 30 seconds, yes, and then you need the jersey number, which in this case is 12. You do not have to push yes after the jersey number. Okay, so let's do this again, but in slow motion. Player number 12 on the home team got a minor penalty for a minute and a half. The way to enter the penalty is by pressing set and then home penalty. And then when you enter the time, remember to enter the colon. So it'll be one colon three zero and yes. Then it says player. That's asking for the jersey number. Jersey number 12. That's all you have to do. So when you look up at the scoreboard, this is what you will see. A 1 minute and 30 second penalty given to the home team, being it's on the left side of the scoreboard. That's the home team's side of the scoreboard. Minute and a half penalty to the home team. Even though you entered the jersey number of 12, that doesn't show up on the scoreboard. Normally, when there is a penalty and the main clock is running, we want the penalty clock to count down the same amount that the main clock is. However, in between periods, we do a one-minute intermission. If there is still somebody in the box with time on a penalty to serve, we do not want their penalty clock to count down during that one-minute intermission. Here is an example of what I'm talking about. There's 1 minute and 11 seconds left to play in the second period. The ref blows the whistle. The guest team gets a minor penalty for a minute and a half. Obviously, when the period ends, there will still be time left on this penalty. Let's fast forward now about 45 seconds. You can see in 30 seconds from now, the main clock will be at zero. However, there will still be about 19 seconds left in the penalty to the player from the visiting team. When we post the one minute intermission and run the clock for one minute between periods, we do not want the time left on the penalty clock to count down during the one minute intermission. Therefore, what we need to do is disable the penalty clock from counting down during the intermission. What we need to do is simply push the penalty on off button. What this will do is it will stop the penalty clock from counting down when the main clock is running down during that one minute intermission. After the one minute intermission, we have to remember to push the button again so that the penalty timer does start counting down when the next period starts. If you've done it right, this is what will happen when you start the one minute clock running for the intermission. You'll notice that the clock starts running, but the penalty time is not running. Removing a penalty. Removing a penalty really isn't all that difficult. If it was against the home team, you push the home penalty button, and then the button right next to it, which is penalty clear. Then the display will ask you to confirm that by pressing the yes button. 
that's it. The reason that clearing a penalty gets to be such a problem for volunteers is the fact that usually you're clearing a penalty after a power play goal and you've got a lot of functions to do. You've got to change the score of the game, the teams are getting lined up and ready again for the faceoff, and you're trying to change the score, note the time for the book, and clear a penalty at the same time. That's why it's difficult, because you're doing a lot of things at once. This is the end of part one. A few notes that I'd like to leave you with, though, is first of all, remember that the horn is your best friend. Give the horn a quick tap if you need to get the ref's attention to stop them from dropping the puck if you are not ready. Also, when you enter a penalty, the jersey number must be entered as a two-digit number, so jersey number 7 would be 07. Also, Remember to stop the penalty clock from counting down during the one minute intermission between periods if there is a penalty that is carrying over from one period to the next. And last, ask for help. The duration of the periods varies with age group. There's a thing called running score. If there's more than a six goal difference, it's running time. You need to confirm that with the referees though as it gets close if you're at a four or five goal difference talk to the refs about running time ask the coaches ask the refs for help if you have any questions at all ask questions so that you get it right part two is coming up next that's where I talk you through a fake game if you want to please feel free to watch and learn if you're comfortable you can stop here We'll start our fake game with the clock already set up and ready to go for the very beginning of period one. The refs drop the puck, you start the timer, and off we go. After only about two minutes of play, Hopkins, the home team, scores a goal. So to enter a home goal, we're going to press set, home score, one, and then confirm it by pressing yes. It will look like this on the scoreboard. Now we're ready to resume play. The ref drops the puck, we start the timer, and the clock is counting down. Now in just a few seconds, the home or the visiting team will score. So when the ref blows the whistle, we stop the clock by on the remote control pressing the off button. And now we have to enter a goal for the visiting team. So it would be set, guest, score, one, yes. That change will look like this on the scoreboard. Well, we've resumed play. Nothing has happened for two minutes, and then the ref blows the whistle at about 7.42 left in the first period. He assesses a penalty to the home team, number five, so we will press set home penalty, one minute, 30 seconds, yes. Player number is zero five. Making that entry will look like this on the scoreboard. So we resume play by starting the clock when the ref drops the puck. The home team is at a disadvantage. The visiting team has a power play. In this case, the ref blows the whistle. We're going to stop the clock because the visiting team scored on the power play. So we stop the clock. Now we need to enter the new score for the visiting team. So it'll be set guest score to yes. Making that change will look like this on the scoreboard. Now you'll see there's still the 1 minute and 18 second penalty for the home team, and we need to remove that since the goal was a power play goal. So in order to remove the penalty, we will press home penalty, penalty clear, and then confirm it with pressing yes. That will look like this on the scoreboard. Okay, we've cleared that penalty. We'll go under the assumption that there was nothing else in that first period of note, so now the clock counted down to zero. We need to set up a one minute intermission, so we'll go set time one minute, yes, and we will go to period two now. 
go ahead and change it to period two and we start the clock counting down for the one minute intermission. All right, now that the time has run out on the one minute intermission, we need to set the clock for 12 minutes for the period two. So it'll be set time 12 minutes, yes. And since we entered period two earlier, we just hit yes again. And now we're ready to begin the second period. All right, so far in our scenario here, the second period has proceeded fairly uneventfully until now. At 547, the home team scores a goal. We will we'll press set home score to yes. The game is proceeding on. We're down to about uh, the 1 minute and 15 second mark in the second period, and the ref blows the whistle here at 111 because the guest team gets a minor penalty. So we'll enter a minor penalty for the guest team by setting by pressing set guest penalty 1 minute 30 seconds and yes. Player number 25. Whenever you post something, make sure it was posted properly by checking on the scoreboard. Also, here in this scenario, you know that there's going to be time remaining in the penalty when the period expires. Therefore, heads up, you're going to need to stop the penalty clock from counting down during the next intermission between the second and third period. All right, here we are. We'll skip forward to the end of the second period. As you can see, there's about 13 seconds left in the period and still about 29 seconds left in the penalty. At this point, there's a lot of stuff we need to do. First, we need to reset the clock to one minute for the intermission. We need to change the period number to three. We need to then disable the penalty clock from counting down during the intermission. And then we need to start the clock for the one minute intermission period. So to make all of these changes, what you first need to do, like we said, is set the clock to one minute. So set time one minute yes it'll ask you for the period you push number three and then we're going to need to disable the countdown clock on the penalty so we will push penalty on off now we're ready to start the clock countdown for the one minute intermission so with your fingers crossed go ahead and start the clock counting down and keep an eye on the guest penalty look at that we did it right good job after the one minute intermission expires, you're going to be a busy person again. What you need to do is set the main clock to 12 minutes. You will not need to change the period this time, however, but you will also need to re-enable the penalty clock to count down in uh, time with the main clock once the next period starts. All right, the first thing that we'll do is re-enable the penalty clock to count down by pressing penalty on off. Note in the display it says time on, that's your confirmation that it will count down. Next thing we need to set the clock, so set time 12 minutes, yes, and we do not need to change the period since we did that earlier and it is the third period. The scoreboard should look like this. Now when you're ready to start, again keep your fingers crossed and make sure that they both count down together and you see that's happening here. You've done everything correct. As a note, when a penalty expires by itself, i.e. the other team has not scored a goal and you didn't have to delete it, the display will just go blank. There's nothing you're required to do. Okay, let's proceed with the third period. Just a few seconds later, the ref blows the whistle and marks a goal for the home team. In order to mark a goal for the home team, it is set home score. They had two, so we'll make it three and push yes. Making that change will look like this as it happens on the scoreboard. All right, the game is uh, progressing on now. We go ahead and start the clock when the ref drops the puck, and nothing happens until about 7 minutes and 45 seconds. At that point, we stop the clock because the ref blows the whistle. Number 11 on the home team gets a minor penalty. So we go set home penalty, 1 minute, 30 seconds, 
to player number 11. This is what that will look like on the board. And we're now ready to resume play. We resume play with the ref dropping the puck and almost immediately he blows the whistle and assesses a penalty to number 7 on the visiting team. We will mark a penalty, so set guest penalty, 1 minute 30 seconds to number 07. The game resumes, we start the clock, and just a few seconds later, we stop the clock because the ref blows the whistle and assigns a penalty to number 9 on the home team. So once again, it'll be set, home penalty, 1 minute, 30 seconds, yes, to number 09. This is what the scoreboard will look like after you post that penalty. It's starting to look a little busy, but it's still manageable. We resume play, but shortly after we start the clock, the guest team who was on the power play scores. So we stop the clock, and we mark the goal for the guest team by pre pressing set guest score. It had been at 2, now they tied it at 3. Here is that change as it's being made on the scoreboard. Also, we now have to delete the 1 minute and 14 second penalty to the home team because the visiting team had scored a power play goal. So in order to delete that 1 minute and 14 second penalty, we will go back to the controller, we will press home penalty, and then the button next to it, penalty clear, to clear that 1 minute and 14 second penalty and verify it by pressing yes. Again, look at the board and verify that that has taken place. We resume play at 7.29. The ref drops the puck. We start the clock running. And at about 7.20 here, the ref will blow the whistle because the home team scores a goal. So we stop the clock, we go to the controller, and we make the home team score 4. So now Hopkins is up 4-3. to three. Unlike the last time, we will not delete one of the penalties because of the fact that it was not a power play goal. So, the ref drops the puck again. It's still 4-on-4 four four hockey. Each team is down one person because they have a penalty. The game continues for a couple minutes, and then the ref blows the whistle because the home team got a goal. So we stop the clock, and then we mark the goal for the home team. The score is now 5-3, to three, with 5 minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the third period. Well, the visiting team is not giving up. At 2 minutes and 15 seconds left in the third period, the visiting team scores a goal. So we stop the clock, and we mark the goal by pressing set guess score 4, yes. Play continues until 2 minutes and 4 seconds remaining in the third period, when the home team makes it exciting and gets a penalty. So we will go ahead and mark the penalty on the home team. 1 minute 30 seconds to jersey number 22. Now play resumes, but after only about six more seconds, the ref blows the whistle and assigns another penalty to the home team. One minute and 30 seconds for jersey number six. We're ready to resume play. It's now five on three. The visiting team has five players out there, and we only have three. Sure enough, we stop the clock because the visiting team got a power play goal. What we need to do now is make the score 5-5 five to five, and we need to delete one of the penalties to the home team being it was a power play goal. Okay, now let's fast forward. We start the clock. We're down to actually about uh, 15 seconds left in the game. The home team scores, we stop the clock, we need to credit the home team with their sixth goal 
to go up by one. It's now six to five with 15 seconds left in the game. As the clock runs out, the horn will sound automatically. And that's the end of the game. Good job running the clock. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for volunteering. Look forward to seeing you at the rink.